Hey, good day guys, how are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy. If we haven't met before, my name is Tech. And uh, let me let Qantas do a little acknowledgement at this point. Qantas Link would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the airport's land, the Wajak people. We pay our respects to elders, past, present and emerging. We now come to uh, me scratching an itch. For those of you who have been watching my channel, you know that I got these, uh, this pair of very over-conditioned iron ranges. Well, guess what? I've got a second pair. So those of you who have subscribed to my channel, and if you haven't, why not? Button down there. Um, you know that uh, I bought a pair of uh, Red Wing Iron Rangers 8111 Amber Harness uh, some time ago, uh, which was a, a very lightly used boot, but unfortunately it was seriously over-conditioned because it was owned by a, an Australian uh, company that made uh, uh, boot oils and boot conditioners and waxes. And they pulled this out at every trade show and slapped on their product to show how well it, it got on. Uh, so unfortunately, Despite this being an amber harness, as you can see, it's actually a very dark brown boot with some amber harness coming through uh, uh, as a result of the, uh, uh, the oils and waxes that have really been pushed into it uh, beyond the tannery. So I really had an itch I needed to scratch because I really do like the shape of these iron ranges. I like the history. Uh, and I and I like the amber harness color. I could have got another color, I suppose, but I do like the amber harness color. So I bought these for about Australian three hundred dollars on eBay, um, well over a year ago. And then recently, I saw this pair of amber harness come up uh, for two hundred dollars Australian on eBay. And I'm sorry, I scratched that itch. <laughs> so um, let me just run through. Uh, why I like these boots. They have a good American heritage uh, work boot history behind them. Now, I don't think you can wear these on an Australian work site. You walk into a uh, builder's work site and your mates are gonna laugh you out of it. <laughs> um, in Australia, we tend to wear Chelsea boots as uh, Australian work boots, or we wear the more technical type with you know nylon and Gore-Tex and all that with a zip up side. Um, but these are clearly an American heritage work boot. I think if you uh, got a child, uh, ask them to close their eyes and draw a boot, this is what they'd come up with. A slightly stubby uh, uh, toe with a toe cap, spring toe, uh, block heel and laces and speed hooks and this lovely Iron Ranger sort of slope down the front. It's uh, built traditionally, 270 degree Goodyear welt. Uh, if you want to know about Goodyear welting, go check my video. Um, and the, the back of it is nailed and glued on, onto the uppers. Uh, it's a true toe cap. This is the original safety toe. And by true toe cap, I mean uh, there's a, 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 a leather a vamp, a full leather vamp that goes down to the toe, and then a second piece of leather that forms the toe cap. Many modern service boot, work boot type things uh, have a false toe cap, which means the leather on the vat only goes up to here. And then there's a leather piece that forms a toe cap. So it's a, a, a single layer. This is a double layer. Uh, leather uh, uh, heel counter. So very traditionally made cork on the inside, leather insoles, uh, uh, nitrile cork outsole. Uh, quite grippy, although it's very flat. This is the older type, type of um, Iron Ranger. Uh, the more modern ones have a Vibram mini lug sole. So those are the reasons I like the Iron Ranger. And as for um, the reasons behind why I want the 8111, I mean, look at that lovely oil infused, not as infused as these, but look at this lovely oil infused uh, amber harness leather. Um, it, it shows that, that sort of amber colored look rather than the dark brown over conditioned uh, pair I've got over there. Um, so I bought these and now I'm sort of thinking, well, what am I going to do with these? Am I going to sell them? Look, to be honest, I don't think they'll, they'll sell for very much. I bought them for $300 because I wanted an Iron Ranger 
in Australia to sell for around 600 Australian dollars. So that was a cheap buy, even though it, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's a Nick from Stridewise boot, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, so I was thinking what to do uh, with this old pair, now that I've got the uh, newer pair. Well, I'm gonna experiment and use these as work boots. Um, at home, I'm, I'm not a manual worker, um, but I do things like repairs around the house. I do gardening. So I'm gonna give these a go as a work boot. And then once they're done, and maybe I get a video out of it, like this one, um, I'm gonna dye them black. So I might do a video about dyeing these black uh, as well after that and see how they turn out. So keep watching this video. As I said, um, I've already done a review of the uh, Iron Ranger boots by Red Wing. Uh, but if you can't be bothered to go check that video out, um, <laughs> even though I've given you a link, um, I'll just go through very quickly about Red Wing. The 8111 Iron Ranger uh, is made by Red Wing Shoes. Now, Red Wing Shoes was founded in 1905, uh, based in Red Wing, Minnesota, in the USA. Still there. Uh, 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 no guesses for uh, how the company was named, I guess. <laughs> um, the Iron Ranger itself was launched in 1922, uh, and it was originally designed in those days for iron ore mine workers working in Minnesota's uh, Masabi Mountains, or the so-called Iron Range. Uh, the modern-day Iron Rangers is not that different from the originals. Uh, there are a few modifications. Um, the first model they produced was this 8111 model in uh oil tan brown and today they have a, a wider range of leather makeups ranging from all sorts of um, uh, uh, smooth leathers, oil tan, black and charcoal and so on, uh, as well as rough outs. This um, 8111 uh, model Iron Ranger is made in a leather that they call amber harness. Amber harness is an oil tan leather uh, tanned by SB Foot Tanning. Uh, another very old company, I think older even than Red Wing itself. And in fact, now owned by Red Wing. So, you know, they, they make their own leathers. Uh, this really is, I think, an iconic boot style. I mean, if you take a look at that boot shape with its uh, slightly bulbous, some would say clown shoe toe. I, I don't think so. I think it's, it's really quite attractive in that chonky style and a bit of toe spring. Uh, and in this model, which is the earlier model, I think they changed in about 2005. Uh, the outsole is a neocork uh, flat outsole with a flat profile, which is perfectly fine if you're wandering around uh, a tunnel uh, digging out iron. <laughs> Maybe not so much for uh, wearing out casual, going for a drink on a slippery floor. Um, and I think in the mid 2000s, because people did complain uh, they changed them into Vibram Mini Lug soles. <sighs> okay, so hi. I spent a day uh, in these older, over conditioned Iron Rangers um, repairing some cracks and pretty large holes in the concrete floor of our porch. So I've been using them all day as a proper work boot. Um, how's it come out? Well, overall, I think they came out really well. Uh, let's deal with what I liked about them using them as a work boot. Number one, the comfort factor. Um, there's comfort and there's comfort, right? Standing on them, they're not comfortable, as in uh, wearing them, wearing a pair of boots with, say, TPU uh, soles or even, say, the Timberland six-inch boot with the uh, honey lug soles that are a bit softer. I mean, this is a fairly solid outsole. But it's comfortable in the sense that the leather um, is very supple. And I know from the other pair that despite this being over conditioned, the other pair is just as supple. Uh, this is a lot softer because of the over conditioning. But it's also comfortable in the sense of the footbed. Uh, I think there is something to be said about this uh, leather court, leather kind of uh, footbed, uh, because your feet Although it's not soft and squishy like on a, on a foam soled, outsoled uh, work boot, let's say a Blundstone, um, it gives you a certain comfort in the stability, uh, in the sense that you do, you are aware that as you're twisting and turning, you're not necessarily sort of moving around on the, on the uh, TPU or on the foam soles 
and so it's quite solid so it's comfortable in that sense it's probably not comfortable in the sense that it's quite hard on the feet uh, but uh, because I was working on my knees and I was twisting around in them I really felt that that comfort factor of the support that they gave you um, I think you have to, to get the sizing absolutely right in these because a little bit bigger and my feet would have been twisting around in them a little bit smaller and they would have been quite painful, I think. Um, so I, I've sized a half down for my Brannock in this. Uh, my Brannock is eight and a half. This is an eight. That worked really well. Uh, the widish last, number eight last, I think this is, uh, on the ball of the feet and that round toe, along with the higher profile sort of bulbous toe, I think gave me a lot of comfort when I was on my knees and I was twisting around uh, because your, your feet weren't necessarily just like held in place. They were actually moving around inside the boot. So that gave a lot more flexibility uh, in the use of the boot. Uh, in terms of protectiveness, I wasn't dropping blocks of concrete on my feet, but uh, certainly it, crawling around, um, you know, um, chipping things off. It felt protective. My ankles felt as if they were supported. So uh, protectiveness, I really liked. Uh, the grip of that neocork sole, it's, it's very flat. I was working on a, on a concrete porch, so it, it was fine. Even when I was spraying it with water, there, there wasn't any slippage as such. I suspect if you're walking around on grass or on soft, muddy surfaces, on snow, I think you'd be in danger. But, you know, from what I used it for, that was, it was fine. Um, what about the after effect? It's got kind of a bit dusty. I'll show you the other pair in a minute. And, you know, I'm rethinking whether or not I might just wash and recondition this, you know, put, put, use a bit of settle soap and then maybe recondition with a big four whether or not I still want to go through my plans of uh, dyeing them black. I think I might still dye them black though, because I have the other pair, the newer eBay pair, uh, which is a, a true amber harness coming out. I might just um, still dye these. I still have to wash some concrete off. In fact, I have to wash concrete off me, uh, a t-shirt and, and trousers, and I, I should probably go and have a shower now and uh, get that all done. So that's it. A slightly different and slightly weirder vid uh, video and I will follow up at some later stage with uh, showing how to uh, uh, saddle soap these these um, these really filthy iron ranges now and I will dye them black so I'll do a video on that uh, and and if you're interested uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, if you like this video please uh, click on the like button uh, lots more videos coming up so keep in touch until then take care and I'll see you soon